when we think about the education system in the 21st century, what comes to mind? Maybe a blackboard, a pencil, a student, a teacher, a principal, a uniform, maybe a pencil box. But a huge piece of this puzzle that is missing is our local community. The community or parents are never involved in the education system. The only involvement is to the extent of paying fees or that superficial parent-teacher meeting. And because the involvement is so low, children usually grow up feeling very disconnected from their own environment and their own culture. They are almost alien to their own way of living because the system pushes them to only focus on books, textbooks and passing an exam. The next time we face an educational issue, I think rather than looking at solutions in UK or in Finland, I think the solutions are already here in our country, in our villages. That's why in today's video, we're going to look at an organization that takes education to a level where it's no longer just about passing an exam or textbooks, but it becomes about life, innovation, and involving the local community. This organization is called Vigyan Ashram. Let's have a look at how this organization plans to change and revolutionize the way we approach education and also decolonize our approach. So let's have a look. Vigyan Ashram was founded by scientist turned educator, late Dr. S. S. Kalbag in 1983. It is situated in Babal, which is a village located approximately 70 kilometers from Pune, Maharashtra. His vision was to create an education system that would allow India to be at the forefront of science and development. He believed that to be able to achieve this, we need to raise the lowest and thus spent most of his life working on education for rural communities. He believed that our natural way and system of learning was to experience life and by doing something practically. And he had this analogy that when we're children, we learn our first language by just experiencing and by doing and by really applying it in our day-to-day -day life. But after that, when we go to school and we're trying to learn a language, we only use books, textbooks or the help of a teacher. And that's why it takes so much longer to master a language. His main three principles were learning while doing, multi-skill training and community services. This philosophy was inspired by Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy of Naitali, where he believed that true knowledge is when we have experienced something as the mind is stimulated through work. Seems quite simple, right? Learning by doing. But now you must be wondering, why did he choose to work with the rural community? There is this constant migration that happens out of villages to cities, either to find more opportunities or just to find a better life. But SS Kalpak felt like if people wanted to move out, it should be out of their own personal choice and not out of compulsion of having no other choice in sight. So SS Kalpak, being an inventor and scientist himself, felt like if he wanted to bring out the truest potential of our country, he had to make sure that technology could reach the remotest parts of our country. Here's a small clip to understand his idea better has a special significance for me. In my opinion, Vigyan, which means science, is really the search for science, search for truth. And it's an eternal search for truth. And ashram represents a value system, simple living and I think. We believe that uh, all the problems of India arise because of the faulty education system. The major fault of the education system is that it stresses words and languages rather than the basic experience. We find that 90% of the children who enter the primary school do not cross the school living examination. Therefore, we feel that these 90%, which represents a major population of India, if they can be rescued and be given a good system of education, then the progress of India will be much faster. 
So this is how the RDES came about, Rural Development Through the Education System. The three main aims for this were, number one, community involvement. He felt like the education system only involved the community and restricted them to just paying a fees. Number two, to create a generation that is not scared to experiment, fail and innovate. And finally, number three, not restricting science to just a classroom or textbooks or even encyclopedias, but making science about experiments, experience and about real life. All this put together would give our children the power to act and to contribute to our society in an active manner rather than just making them a passive recipient of knowledge in a classroom environment. SS Kalbab tried to implement this prototype in three schools in Babur. Seeing its success, he divided this into two parts. Number one, the DBRT, Diploma in Basic Rural Technology, which is a one-year residential diploma course. Number two, IBT, Introduction to Basic Technology, a three-year course for the 8th, 9th and 10th students in regular schools. Now let's have a look at both of these individually. So let's start with the IBT program. The essence of this program is to develop creativity, logical thinking, critical thinking, team building, gender equality and all of these things through real life work and through real experiences. The main curriculum or syllabus is divided into two parts. There are two broad categories, non-living and living. Under non-living comes things like engineering, energy, environment and under living things like agriculture, animal husbandry, food processing or even health. If you think about it, science is a combination of thinking and doing, head and hand. So if we really want to impart this essence of science, then instead of just teaching them through encyclopedias or textbooks, we need to create a space where they are allowed to experiment, innovate and really make mistakes. Because let's say we want to teach them about engines. Instead of just showing them a diagram and saying that this is how an engine works, why not give them an actual engine and allow them to break it apart and put it back together. In this way, they don't just get ready to pass an exam by writing the correct answer on how an engine works, but they know how an engine works in real life, which is a lot more useful than just knowing the theory behind it. So this method of prioritizing doing develops not only creativity and critical thinking, but most importantly, gender equality. Why gender equality specifically? Because Vigyan Ashram rejects the notion that certain work must be restricted to only boys and others to only girls. Here, boys learn sewing, stitching and girls learn how to build things, do carpentry or even engineering. So, irrespective of gender, children are taught to respect each and every kind of work as equal. The best part about this program is that any school can apply this from the 8th standard to the 10th standard. In Maharashtra, over 122 schools are applying this as their core subject. And currently, it is also known as the Multi-Skill Foundation course. So now let's have a look at some of the projects that these children are into and are doing constantly on a daily basis. Here there's a variety of things that the students take up such as plumbing, gardening, understanding the process of grinding, estimating an animal's age through its teeth, working with bamboo, exploring nursery techniques and the list just goes on. Now moving on to the second program which is DBRT, Diploma in Basic Rural Technology. So this is a one year program offered by Vigyan Ashram after which they are offered an internship in the field of their choice. Oh, that sounds pretty nice but who can actually enroll in this program? This is for those between the ages of 15 and 20 and for those who are really passionate and interested in building something in rural India. Again, this course is also built on the vision and intention of learning by doing. So there are absolutely no exams here 
and students here only learn by doing and contributing and taking up projects in their community. This is also a multi-skill training program which means that the students here are given training in multiple skills such as environment, health, nutrition, animal husbandry, energy. So all these things and subjects are only taught or exposed to these children in one particular way which is through real world experiences. Other than that, computers, meditation, sports, etc. are also part of this course. This is also recognized by the NIOS, National Institute of Open Schooling. Even though this course is conducted in three languages, English, Hindi and Marathi, they believe that the philosophy of learning by doing, just like music, has the ability to overcome the language barrier. So here, work is what actually becomes the language of education. There are only two entry qualifications that you need. One is that you should have passed the 8th grade and second is that you should be willing to work by hand. That's it. Nothing else. Now, you might be wondering what do these students do after their course at Vigyan Ashram? Does this course actually make a difference to their lives? Most of the students after Vigyan Ashram get into entrepreneurship. Either they start their own businesses or their own rural enterprises. Let's have a look at two such examples. Ganesh Power, who is an alumni of Vigyan Ashram, started Power Engineering Works, which is an agricultural tool manufacturing and distribution enterprise. He was born and brought up in a small town in Pune and his entire family was in the field of agriculture. Following his family's footsteps, he pursued a degree in agricultural science, after which he became a contract labourer in a local seed farm. But he always had this bug in his head that he wanted to start something of his own. That's when he got introduced to Vigyan Ashram. Not only did Vigyan Ashram provide the necessary skill training, but it also helped Ganesh to establish his enterprise with funding and financial support because of which he was able to set up his enterprise. For his venture, he has also designed innovative tools like a potato planter, a tractor mounted sprayer and many more which he designs as per the requirement of the local farmers. Currently, he is self-employed and he is also earning enough to provide employment to five skilled labourers because of his enterprise. The second example is of Kalyani Chavali, who established Sarodia Food Technologies in May 2021. This organization provides nutritious and healthy food at an affordable price made with local ingredients. After completing her B.Tech, Kalyani actually wanted to pursue higher studies. But that's when she got to know about Vigyan Ashram's Entrepreneurship Developmental Program. A program that allows you to explore business and different ways to run a business. It was because of this program that Kalyani realized the potential of setting up her own business. And that is how Sarodhya Food Technologies was born. Currently, her food business is making and selling across three villages in Maharashtra. She also plans to expand across different districts and villages in the state. So now, what are my thoughts about this program? I actually like this program because it solves two crucial things that our education system fails to do. The first thing is that Vigyan Ashram creates a link between the community and the school which makes children feel like a powerful component in the process of change. It is not only about the scientific skills and trainings that they receive but it is also that sense of compassion and kindness to people around them. In our normal education system, it's a zero-sum game. For one person to come first, everyone else needs to be put down so that that one person can top the board. Basically, there can be only one winner at the end. This creates an entire generation of people who are insecure about their own abilities because for their entire life, it's been compared to on an unfair scale. Almost seems like a horror movie, right? So, from all the different skills that they learn at Vigyan Ashram, the most important is that they are capable to contribute to the community itself. They can build sustainable houses, grow crops if destroyed, create diesel engines, or even do a blood checkup for the community. In short, 
Through this approach, we start at looking at children as a very powerful component in our society and not just as someone who is prepared to obey, be disciplined and reply only when asked. The second point that I have is that in our education system, we usually feel dependent on an adult or a teacher to learn or even to act. Every action in a school setting needs permission or a nod from a teacher before we can get to it. This way of living stunts our own initiative and potential because even as adults when we grow up we are almost waiting for that voice in our head for someone to tell us okay do this now only then do we have the confidence to go about it because we have been trained and conditioned for so many years that we need someone else's permission to do something so that's why i really appreciate vidya nashram's approach to allow children and give them a space to experiment innovate and make mistakes so that they can actually find their own initiative and potential through making these mistakes this approach is definitely going to break that barrier between idea and execution life then becomes a lot more exciting when we are not stuck in the boundaries of our mind but we can actually get started and do something and bring real tangible change in the world so this is the end of today's video let me know your thoughts about this approach to education and i would love to know how you were taught science in school and what would you do differently let me know in the comments down below and until next week bye